Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is part two in our Halloween series entitled The Wicker Saga and The Autumn Moon is Bright. Part two. Without further ado, let's get straight into that. I step out of the car my heavy boots crunching in the gravel, dark hair rippling in a light breeze that carries the invigity, earthly smell of the surrounding forest. Maurice follows close behind, his large frame and imposing presence. I don't need him, but it's nice to have a backup when the going gets crazy. Maurice places a hand on my arm as I reach out to touch the door. Remember, Morgan, no matter what we get in here, tonight is strictly recon. It's a full moon, and if it is a wolfman, anything more would be suicide. Got it. Yeah, big baby. Now stop worrying. Let's get to work. I shove past him and push my way inside. The tap room is a dingy as I expect. I am completely lifeless save for the old man tending the bar, absently wiping its chips surface with a stained rag. I saunter up and perch on one of the stalls. Maurice lowering his bulk beside me. The bartender gives us a look, first of surprise, then concern, before quickly hiding it behind a mask of seemingly nonchalance. What'll it be, darling? I resist the urge to roll my eyes and glance over the unimpressive line and a half empty bottles behind him. Bourbon, double, rocks, whatever's cheap. He nods. And you, big fella? Just seltzer. Lime, if you got it. The man moves to fetch the drinks. He's nervous about something. Anxiety practically sweating off of him. I lean into the bar. Lou, is it? He nods almost impersonally. Ice clinking softly in the glass as he pours. Been here a while? Hey up. Going on about 25 years now. Huh? Long time. So, what do you know about wolfmen, Lou? I mentally pick up a shot of sheer panic ripped through the man an instant before the glass shattered on the floor. I'm actually surprised how well he keeps his composure as he turns back to us. You need to leave. I throw him a winning smile. Lou, my man, you leave all the ladies this unsatisfied? Get out! His face cracks, the fear behind his eyes pouring through. Please, you don't know what you're walking into, darling. I open my mouth to respond. Oh, I think I do. Come on! Maurice stands and hauls me to my feet. Pulls me towards the door. Hey! I awkwardly stumble outside. Even the pre-twilight intense after the dim recesses of the bar. What the fuck, Maurice? Real subtle, Morgana. Real subtle. Whatever, man. Get off me. I'm going back. He lets me go. Nah, I'm pulling seniority. What the fuck? Maurice shakes his head. No point. We know enough. The guy is obviously involved with whatever's going on. You picked that much up from your first vision, yeah? I nod reluctantly. Okay, now, his reaction tells us that we're right on about the Wolfman. We stick here trying to get more info. He might give it to us, sure. Or, his eyes shift to the full moon, slowly beginning to rise above the treetops. It could throw a wrench in things. So instead, we're going to ditch the car, get loaded up, and come back to see what happens. If nothing goes down because you already messed it up, we can always question him later. His brow shifts. Any objections? I respond with a sneer, but stay silent. I know he's alright. He smiles. Glad you're on board. We get into the Impala, and I crank the ignition. The car sends up a spray of gravel as I throw it in reverse, and peel out onto the road. After about a quarter of a mile, I spot the worn deer 
trail and turn into the woodline. Wordlessly, I exit the car. Maurice joins me at the trunk and we go about readying our weapons. Two silver-coated knives clip onto my belt, six inches long and carrying a serrated, a serrated edge. I pull my long duster back to seat a Smith and Wesson in the holster I'm wearing. The revolver loaded with the .38 silver bullets I cast myself. Maurice has donned a custom leather bandolier. He situates a machete over one shoulder. The blade is specifically treated with silver, the same as my knives, and a double barreled shotgun over the other. Extra silver slugs line the crossed belts wrapped across his chest. We exchange a nod and slip into the trees back towards Luz. Once we get in the side of the building, we hunker down and wait for something interesting to happen. It doesn't take long. After maybe 20 minutes, an old junker screams down the road, pulls into the lot and practically runs into the wall of the bar. An unremarkable looking man jumps out, stopping briefly to untangle himself from the seatbelt before ducking inside. I close my eyes and extend my senses. It's hard to pick up any precise thoughts from the man. He's so blinded by fear and rage. I do manage to capture the image of a woman, blonde hair, in snarls, face red and ugly from crying, but nothing more. The man stays inside for maybe three minutes, muffled sounds of shouting, reaching us even as far away as we are, before he stumbles outside to the car and roars off back the way he came. I raise my eyebrow at Maurice who shrugs. Come on. I pull my pistol free as we cautiously make our way to the bar entrance. Maurice rests his hand on the machete handle and steps inside as I follow close behind. Lou is sprawled on one of the bar stools, several of the formerly half-empty bottles now completely drained and littered about him. I move to the old man. I never did get my bourbon. His quiet laugh does little to cover a sob. Sorry darling, I went and drank it all. Knew the jig was up when you started asking questions. <laughs> What's going on, Lou? Suppose it doesn't matter now. Reckon you were probably watching the place. Saw my buddy Larry, trying to call. Tell him not to come, but he was already on his way early on the account of those bastards. He stops, finds a not quiet, quite empty bottle, takes a drink. Biker gang, call themselves sons of Romulus. Operate out of an abandoned pot grow a bit north of here. Outlaws, no regard for anything. Always been a little off, but the last few months, they've been downright sadistic. Abducting people left and right. Everyone knows. Everybody's too scared to do anything. Well, earlier today, they took Larry's ex-wife right out of her kitchen. Oh, God. Neighbours in the 70s saw the whole thing. Called Larry. Wish he hadn't. He takes another drink. Kills the bottle and drops it. He came here hoping, hoping I'd help her get her back. I feel for her, I really do. Lacey's a sweet gal, but God only knows what those fuckers are doing to her. Though I can probably imagine. Enough bodies have been piling up. <sighs> he sighs. But even if I weren't so fucked up, I still wouldn't go. The sons, they're unnatural. Got abilities. But even that ain't it. It's... He trails off, his eyes flicking to the pale moon, shining brightly through the dirty bar window. The wolf? Maurice's voice is quiet, practically a whisper. Lou doesn't speak. But the abject terror on his face is answer enough. Maurice moves to the door. Let's go. I rush to carry my partner as he steps outside. Hey! Lou calls after us. Hey, wait! I ignore the old man, Maurice. Long strides practically forcing me to jog as he walks back toward the stashed car. What the hell are we doing, Maurice? Going to help that woman. And this Larry guy, obviously, one of those bikers must be a wolfman. Maybe more than one. We know the direction of their headquarters. With luck, your talent will be able to guide us in. Yeah? What happened to just recon tonight? Anything else is suicide, huh? 
Morgan. His look is pained. You better know, better than anyone, what it's like to be helpless and trapped with monsters in the dark. Past terrors flash through my mind. Cold, red eyes burn into my soul as I am lost in a living fog. Memory shifts and I am lying paralysed in a room of white and the sounds of choked screams echoing nearby. Damn it! Fine, in and out. Assuming Lacey isn't dead already, we get her and get done. Agreed? Agreed. And for the record, I think this is a stupid idea and it's your fault if it blows up in our faces. You can say, I told you so. That'll make me feel so much better when we're dead. Maurice smiles lightly. As long as you're happy. I only sneer in response. Wow. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, of course, please do let me know down below. Uh, please do like and share. And remember, folks, above all, if you're wandering out in the dark, dark woods, remember, be safe, not sorry. <laughs>